and I think it's actually a great time for us to transition to Article 3. We're going to be looking at um, retinal implants, and this is a research coming out of EPFL by Professor Diego Gezi. So retinal implants, I think they first really made big waves around 2013, and for our listeners that aren't really familiar, the idea was that you would have some sort of device that would record whatever was in front of the user, the real world, and it would turn what the video is seeing into electrical signals, signals on a microcomputer that is on a pair of glasses or something similar. And then the implant itself would be a group of electrodes that would stimulate the nerves with electric signals where the images were being detected. So imagine like an outline, like a black and white outline of a person in sit standing in front of you. And that's what would be displayed or electrified. On the so it's itself. basically an artificial eye. It's got a sensor, a camera, that's taking in light, converting it to electrical signals, and then stimulating the nerves, just like your rods and cones were. But I imagine probably with a lower field of view, lower resolution than you or I are used to. That's right, and it's great you brought that up, because in the initial trials that they did, I believe after one to three years, most people, two-thirds of the patients, I believe, actually stopped using their implants because they said it didn't really give them a neutral or better experience than just not using it at all. So they took that data, they took that information, and they made some improvements, and this is what we're talking about today. From the original product that they had developed, this new iteration includes a 10 degree of field of view increase, so going from 20 degrees to 30 degrees. And they also increased the number of electrodes. And for comparison, you, you can think of as going from like a 720p TV to like a 1080p TV. Okay. You just get a higher resolution out of it. And that that's really been the main drive. They want to make sure that whatever they're giving people can actually bring them some sort of functional benefit. And with the resolution increase, you're going to be able to better detect and distinguish what you're seeing from another. And with the increased field of view, like you can think of like your eyes seeing, you're not limiting how wide so they basically your, guess, gave the gave them wider view maybe a little bit of peripheral vision or at least the area that we need to focus on when we're seeing why that's right you know you said they increased the resolution a lot why not go to like the order of millions of electrodes because i know in the back of your eye on your retina you've got millions and millions of rods and cones can't your eye support having super high resolution like 5k or 4k or 8k resolution with these sensors or is there a physical limit that they reached that they had to stop at that's a great question actually they talked about this limit in terms of what it meant for the patient right they were talking about if you had too many electrodes that were too close to each other it would be confusing to distinguish when one is lit up and one where one is not okay so 10,500 was a number that was determined through experimentation to make sure that like you're getting a good enough resolution that you can like kind of tell what is going on, but not so many that you're just kind of getting confused because the clusters okay, are so, so close. Okay, so it's, it's the time. highest resolution that the eye can support without there being like basically crosstalk between the nerves where the electrodes are located. That's right. Okay. That's right. And that, that's how they also arrived at the 30 degrees of field of view. They mentioned that after that point, there's almost like a saturation limit and 30 degrees was the mark to hit. I... I think this is great because, you know, a lot of times we hear about these breakthrough technologies, they're going into clinical trials, like maybe if we had heard about this artificial vision in 2013. Um, but when you look at the clinical trials, a lot of times they aren't perfectly tuned to the way that people need them. So I imagine most of the reason why people stopped using these within the first one to three years is because they didn't have a wide enough field of view or they didn't have high enough resolution to navigate through the world around them. So Kudos to Professor Gezi and his team at EPFL for kind of taking this feedback and iterating and using technology that's new to help improve a product that hopefully, I mean, I think it's a really noble cause trying to help restore vision to folks who don't have it. So, Agreed. And